the 3D cursor's main purpose is to define the position at which any new object is added. New objects are placed so that their origin is located at the center of the cursor. When we start a new project, the 3D cursor is positioned at the world origin. To move the 3D cursor we can hold down the shift key then right click on the new position desired. We can also keep the right mouse key pressed down and drag the cursor to a new position. Using this approach, the top left of the 3D viewport, shows the cursor's change of position in all three directions, X, Y, and Z. Another option is to select the second icon of the toolbar. This is the 3D cursor's icon and using it allows us to place or drag the cursor using only the left mouse button. The cursor's movement in each dimension is dependent on our current viewpoint. By selecting a named viewpoint such as front we restrict the cursor's movement to only two dimensions. There being no movement in the direction whose axis is perpendicular to the screen. In the case of the front view, this means there is no movement in the Y direction. To position the 3D cursor at an exact location, we can show the sidebar, by pressing N, then select the view page. This not only allows us to specify the cursor's position, but also its angle of rotation about each of its axes. Normally, the rotation of the 3D cursor will have no effect on any new object that we add to our scene but if we go to the last op panel and set a line to 3D cursor, our new object now rotates to match the orientation of the cursor. If we want to return the 3D cursor to its original settings, Rather than go to the trouble of entering zero in all the appropriate fields in the sidebar, we can just press Shift C to achieve the same effect. However, this key combination often adjusts the zoom setting at the same time. If the cursor is placed over an existing object in our scene, Blender will automatically ensure that the cursor is positioned on the surface of that object. Here we can see the 3D cursor is placed on the surface of our cube. but we can achieve even greater control when we want to position the 3D cursor on part of an existing object. At the center top of the 3D viewport is an icon which controls snapping. Snapping is the term used to force the position of an item, that item may be anything from a complete mesh to an individual vertex. And snapping also applies to the 3D cursor. Next to the snapping icon is a drop-down panel containing several options. We'll be looking at snapping in detail in a later video, but for now it's mostly the options under the heading snap to that we're interested in. The first of these is increment. Using this option, the cursor moves in discrete steps when dragged. The size of the steps depends on the grid measurements being used. With the default settings, each step is 1 meter. We can see the changes in location in the view page of the sidebar. If we go to top view, then zoom in so that we can see the smaller grid, each step becomes 10 centimeters, that is 0.1 of a meter. Returning to the snapping panel, there is an absolute grid snap checkbox. If we click here, the 3D cursor will move only to exact intersects on the grid. When zoomed out, this means each of the three coordinate values are an exact number of meters. And when zoomed in to produce a 10 centimeter grid size, coordinates change by 0.1 of a meter. All the other snapping options relate to positioning the 3D cursor on part of an existing object. Vertex will position the cursor over a vertex of the object if the cursor is dragged to a position nearby. Edge positions the cursor anywhere along a local edge. Face is the option we get by default when moving the cursor, even without switching on snapping. This causes the cursor to lie on any face that it is positioned over. The next useful option is Edge Center which places the cursor at the center of an edge when dragged close to that position. Edge Perpendicular has two steps. We start by moving the mouse pointer onto an edge and then hold down the Shift key and press and hold down the right mouse button. This creates a circle on the edge at the position of the mouse pointer. Now, with the Shift key and right mouse button still held down, we move to the opposite edge moving along it until a dotted line appears between the new position and the point marked on the original edge. Blender has snapped the 3D cursor to a point which creates a perpendicular line to the first edge. Instead of clicking on the snapping icon, 
we can toggle snapping on and off simply by pressing shift tab. And if we want snapping to be on only for the current operation, we can hold down the control key after we start dragging the cursor. This will activate the current snapping option which we've previously selected from the drop-down list. More cursor positioning options are available in a pie menu that we can display by pressing Shift-S. Of the several options displayed by the menu, four relate to the 3D cursor. Cursor to world origin has the same effect as Shift-C resetting the cursor's position to the world origin and setting all rotations to zero. Cursor to grid positions the cursor at the nearest grid point. Depending on the zoom factor this will either be to the nearest meter, or 0.1 of a meter. Cursor to active positions the cursor at the origin of the active object. Cursor to selected moves the cursor to the midpoint of all the selected objects as measured from their origins. Although the controlling the position of the next object we are about to add it is the most important role of the 3D cursor, it is not its only function, as we will discover in later videos.